the reality is that we all need a certain amount of stress, a certain amount of anxiety to perform well. If we don't care about that exam that we're going to have tomorrow, we'll probably fail. If we're going to cross the street and a truck is coming at us, we have release of adrenaline. We have release of a hormone that we call cortisol. We want to jump out of there, and adrenaline and cortisol are going to help us do that. So there's that good amount of stress. But if all day long you're feeling like a truck is coming at you, day after day after day, that's going to take a toll on the body. And uh, the amygdala, obviously, here is has greater activation yes. in the PTSD. We were able to image children that had experienced trauma and compare those brain images with children that didn't have an experience of trauma and didn't have symptoms. Right, an exaggerated fear response. An exaggerated fear response. With decreased activation in areas that we need to control that emotion in the frontal areas. Exposure to early adversity and trauma literally affects the structure and function of children's developing brains. So the kid next to them hits them or the teacher reprimands them in a way that uh, they're uncomfortable with, right? Literally what they're feeling, that activation is like there was a truck coming at them. You can give something that will mask symptoms. Right? For example, if someone has a cough, right, you can give them a really strong cough serum that will suppress their cough. But if it's because they have tuberculosis or lung cancer, then what you're doing is merely masking the symptoms while the disease process continues to fester. We know what's happening in children's brains and bodies with the experience of toxic stress. So the question now is, what do we do about it?